All right. Cool. All right. We're actually going to uh, start. All right. Countdown. Starting in three, two, one, go. Hey, gamers. This is Kida. And today, we have a very special playthrough of Majora's Mask. I have some people here to help me commentate. Hey, I'm Hello, ZFG. I'm Jeff and I'm... Oh, whatever. Yeah, nice. You go ahead. You're okay. ZFG. Yeah, I'm ZFG. And I'm Jackenheimer. And so uh, what, what are you watching today, Kita? Today we're doing the real three-day challenge. Which, for those that don't know, one of the oldest Zelda challenges there is, is called the three-day challenge. Um, where you do first cycle, and then you have three days to beat the game. However... This puts a new spin on that category um, because we're going to be using SRM to turn human in first cycle and complete the game. Um, so not only is this in less time, so instead of having six days or two cycles, we have one cycle. We do everything in one cycle. Um, we also, because uh, we're using SRM to turn human. We won't have access to Ocarina or Song of Feeling, and we won't have inverted Song of Time. So time moves three times slower when you use inverted. We don't have access to that. And on top of that, when you don't have Ocarina, time moves five times slower than inverted. So that was a lot. You mean, you mean five times faster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, that was a lot. I don't want to mean to overwhelm people, but that's like a very brief introduction. Um, but it will be made clear as we go through. Yeah, so so this is going to be in true first cycle, as in, so you only have, your only cycle is the actual first cycle, and time moves faster in that first cycle. And you have no ocarina to uh, manipulate time or anything. So yeah, for people saying like, uh, can we skip first cycle? Uh, no, you are not allowed to skip first cycle in this. Um, and just for clarification, since that was a little confusing, um, five times faster than inverted time. For, compared to normal time, it's five thirds times faster. Don't, don't think about it too hard. It, it, we'll make it clear as we go on. Okay, do we want to talk about uh, the significance of February 21st? Um, sure. Yeah, so every February 21st, starting from 2015, we have done a commentated LOTAD every single year. So this is the eighth one. Um, and it's always been either Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask. That's just how it turned out. Um, Yeah, it started because like coincidentally, there was just um, two years in a row where they both where two like new Loteds were released on February twenty first, right? Like it was MM two paws, and then the next year was OOT Hundo three paws. Yep, complete yeah. coincidence. Yeah, and then so we were just like, okay, well, let's just make this a yearly thing then. Um. I should also probably mention, I mean, this is probably obvious, but I included um, the day and time as part of the video. Um, that way, when you're watching, you just know, like, what time it is, how much time is remaining. Uh, if you ever see it look something weird, it's just because it's reading, like, the actual in-game values. So, like, it really is night zero, 5.58 a.m. Um, during first cycle before you enter clock zone. Oh yeah, so someone asked about uh, the significance of language. Like, uh, is there a reason this is on English as opposed to Japanese? Oh, yes, I can answer that. Um, that is just because the SRM setup we will see only works on English. Um, now, the reason for that is just um, a matter of the heap setup just on, on Japanese. the 
the actors are a little bit larger or the knots knots between the actors and yeah um on japanese we did not get lucky but yeah english turned out perfect oh and the astute viewer might have noticed that our file name was o o o o o o o o that's significant i'm not going to elaborate but just keep that in the back of your mind Seems like Chad likes the file name. So it's, uh, it's catchy. Yeah, so this, this this beginning up to getting to Clock Town is still pretty pretty normal, pretty like basic MM stuff. But then once once we get to Clock Town, things might start getting different. Yeah, I was about to say. Um, so the whole idea is that we use SRM to um, turn human, but we're not able to do that immediately. So something that you have to like look out for is that um, we still need magic and we still need, we need it to be night one. Um, hopefully that's not a spoiler, but it just means that we're stuck as Deku until night one at the very earliest. Um, so just remember that as we're going through. So something you need is something in your inventory. So normally in any percent you would get the Deconuts here. Yeah, but yeah, it doesn't look like you get them, yeah. In any percent you would, but I don't know, I'm kind of built different. So yeah, for any percent it would just be fastest to get the Deconuts there. Um, and that would then be the only item in your inventory. So, yeah, when should I explain the SRM? Because I think that might take a while, or at least a little bit. Uh, pro probably uh, once once we get into Clock Town. I guess we can explain this real quick, yeah. just for people who don't know. But yeah, yeah. Uh, alright, go ahead. Um, yeah, so there's a cutscene trigger here. No one count the pauses, by the way. Do not count the pauses. Did you just did... fail one? No. Uh, okay. <laughs> there's a cutscene oh. trigger here that you can skip by advancing one frame. Um, you can just pause buffer to skip the cutscene and not watch it. Um, But yeah, that lets you skip talking to having my salesman for the first time. I mean, yeah, yeah. so I'll reset here. Okay. And then, yeah, we heard we will get magic and some other stuff, I guess. But nothing too specular, uh, spe spectacular for now, I guess. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Should I well, explain this already? Um, yeah, but first I just want to say, like, since we can't do SRM until night, I'm basically going to be using the first day to, like, prepare, like, just get, like, rupees and stuff. So you can go ahead. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, okay, so SRM uh, stands for Stay Reference Manipulation, and it is a glitch in... Both N64 Zeldas, also the 3DS remakes, uh, yeah. It is a glitch based on carrying something, so the carry mechanic of the games um, are responsible for the glitch, basically. And yeah, when I say carrying, I mean just uh, um, any actor that you can pick up as Link, as Human Link, for example, you pick up a bush, 
or um, other example is um, with a boomerang. You can boomerang a rupee, for example. Um, so it's that mechanic like that. So we need to look um, at how that mechanic works in theory. So the, the um, let me just read this. Okay. So how does carrying something work on a technical level? Uh, we need... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm blacked out a little bit. I probably got the Rona, by the way. <laughs> okay, so uh, how it works is the parent actor, so the one who is carrying, and uh, usually that's Link, um, needs to... Uh, pick up the child actor and then where the child actor is loaded the memory For that we get a pointer. So pointer is basically just a memory address. So let's say um, A port is loaded to memory address 42069 let's just say that and link picks up that port then link will create a pointer to Yeah, 42069 um, yeah, so Link will always remember where the pot is in memory with that pointer. And then the game looks up the um, yeah, the, the position of Link, or his hands to be exact, and then it just applies the position of the hands to the pot. So that is how the carrying mechanic overall works. Um, yeah, normally the child actor, so or the, the pointer to the child actor, is set to zero once the actor dies. So let's say you pick up your pot and run into a bomb explosion. Um, yeah, then the pot is gone and also that pointer is set to null and Link drops his hands and stops writing position and angle data. But when you can prevent that pointer from being set to null, then SRM happens. Now there are some tricks to prevent that, uh, prevent that the pointer is set to zero. And if you manage to do to do that, then yeah, you get SRM. So, so what we what we want is the pot being gone, but still right position and angle data to four twenty sixty nine. I already said that. Whatever. So, where the thing we carried, uh, there's no free memory because yeah, in our example, the pot is gone, but we still keep writing that data and. Because the pot is gone, it's, the memory is free, and something new can load there. So, let's say something loads exactly to, uh, where the pot was. I don't know, in, in Observatory, for example, there are a lot of torches. Let's say the torch loads exactly where the pot was. Then you would just start carrying around the pot. So that would be simple dis uh, displacement SRM. The simplest way of SRM. But yeah, um, uh, very powerful it becomes when things start to load misaligned. So, for example, when instead of the torch in observatory, um, the treasure chest just loads exactly so that we would manipulate the contents of the chest with, um, with our angle data. So that would be um, the example for chest SRM. So you can just get any item. But yeah, uh, what we will do here is actually something a little bit different. So, when Link charges the Deku Bubble, he also carries the Deku Bubble around. It might sound a little bit weird, but um, yeah, it's it's the same mechanic. Just Deku Link carries on around the bubble, not with his hands, but I don't know with with his face or his mouth or nose. I don't know. But yeah, it's the same mechanic. So. What we need is um, something to put Link in a frozen state so that he will not deactivate that pointer. So um, what we will use is catching a Bomber Kid. When you catch a Bomber Kid during the Hide and Seek game, then yeah, we get exactly that frozen state that we need. The bubble, however, is not put in that state. So the bubble will just keep blowing up and then pop and yeah, the bubble is gone. But the pointer to write position and angle data, data will still remain, and yeah, then we get SRM. 
And the thing that uh, we will manipulate will be some smoke. So there's a balloon in North Clock Town. So we, we will do this in North Clock Town. And there's this balloon um, with the Majora mask. And uh, yeah, when you um, load that up with the Jacko Bubble, then some smoke spawns. And we manipulate some of the code of the smoke. We will write to the um, the destroy function. We will uh, write one line with our accent Y angle. And yeah, thereby doing a little bit of arbitrary code execution. And yeah, what that will do, I guess you will see later, if you have not seen any percent yet. Okay. Um, to catch people up to speed, by the way, on um, what we've been doing while waiting for night, I got the moon's tier. Not gonna say why, but remember that I got it. Just keep that in the back of your mind. And we're also getting the adult wallet. Just slight spoilers. Maybe you thought I was getting 200 rupees for a different reason, but I'm getting the adult wallet. Sorry I had to find out this way. Um, but then, we're basically ready to do the SRM, which Turkenheimer just explained. Um, I actually don't know anything about SRM. Uh, I was just following orders when I made this, and it worked. Yeah. We had to um, do some adjustments to make it work on Bishawk. But yeah, it works fine now. Um, yeah, I mean, on that note, um, what I've done with this TAS, I made it on BizHawk. Um, BizHawk crashes on certain things that we Virtual Console doesn't. So for those things, like such as the SRM, um, we just made it so that it doesn't crash. Yeah, so basically, effectively, we, we emulate we and not N64 for this run, more or less. Yeah, just pretend this is done on a Wii. Hey, my cat's blocking the screen again. All right, moment of truth coming up. There's nothing left to do while we wait for night, so we're just chilling here. By the way, um, so you um, collected those two rupees uh, from Keaton Bushes at first, right? Couldn't you have gotten the five rupees in Laundry Pool? I could have done a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think it really matters because of waiting for night. But dude, two seconds, probably. I actually did this segment so long in advance before everything else just to see if it was possible. So Yeah, it makes sense. If anyone thought that like this looks really unoptimized, valid and correct. But also it gets better after this point, so don't worry. Yeah, so again, this is just waiting for night, and then as soon as it turns night, that bomber kid below is going to be used for magic. Okay. It's night. Everything matters now. Doing a SRM setup? I don't want to talk about it. And yeah, so that bubble is going to pop. And that bubble popping as the camera was panning let something else load, which uh, I guess was the smoke from the exploding balloon. And there we go. Yeah. And then, that, yeah. That's where the file name came into play, by the way. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the file name. Uh, character represents the item that you can equip. Yeah. So lowercase o represents Deku Mask. So I just made it all lowercase o. Just because. 
Yep, and so that SRM just lets you equip Decamask, which means you can finally turn into human in first cycle using Decamask. Yep, so now the real run and challenge begins. Note that uh, we don't have Ocarina. We don't even really have Deku Mask. Like, we have it equipped on our C button, but we don't actually have, like, the real thing. And I'm just doing the KFA quest as a flex. It's obviously not needed to beat the game. Hmm. Uh, okay, so hopefully everyone knows what hovering is. But if you don't, uh, look it up. Because... What we're doing here is we're about to hover to the Hidden Owl. Hidden Owl is an owl that is in West Clocktown that's meant to look like it's in South Clocktown. So it's actually a different owl than the South Clocktown Owl. So if we hit that owl and don't hit any other owls, then when we use Song of Soaring later, we can warp to... Uh, whatever owl we want based off of our map cursor location. Also, you can explain what a Hess is if you want. Uh, yeah, you you uh, roll into a bomb, it sends you backwards really fast, and if you hold just outside the dead zone of the control stick, you get to preserve a very high speed you get from the recoil, and you go fast. And it looks cool. Also, I was expecting way more time stop, but there wasn't oh. any of that yet, so... Oh yeah, so... Uh, yeah, Termina yeah, term Field's a bit different in First Cycle, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm glad you brought both of those things up. So, for one, um, when you don't have Ocarina, Termina Field has, like, no actors loaded in it. So there was no cutscene or, like, chess or enemies or anything. Are there trains on day two? That's cool. And for two, the second point is there is a glitch in Majora's Mask called Time Stop, where you can literally stop time. Um, I actually banned that for this challenge. Oh my god. So... I did not expect that. Yeah, we won't be stopping time, we won't be... Uh, slowing down time with inverted Song of Time, because we don't have access to Song of Time. Um, and we won't be resetting day, we won't be doing any of that. So, like, it's 11pm night one, it'll never be any time before that ever again. Time only moves forward. Yeah, so my original idea was to make this more or less this um, a challenge category but i couldn't I, I couldn't solve one thing so i'm really excited to see how the thing's solved i could not think of any way to get ocarina or learn song of healing stay tuned oh all right so only reason i got that as human is because the text box is faster even though it doesn't matter for game time, it's because I care about the viewing experience. Thank you. RTA matters too. Um, so the fastest way to get past this big Octo, I'm pretty sure is um, a DQ recoil, which I've done in pretty much every LOTAD. So, when I wound up doing this, I just got it first try. Um, the whole idea behind that skip is that you have like respawn invincibility where the Octo can't grab you, so you can move past them during that time. Yeah, and any, any damage recoil when you're invincible just for some reason sends you back really fast. Note that I dropped a nut there. That'll be important.
Okay, so we are getting Song of Time, but we don't have an Ocarina yet, so... You mean Song of Soaring? Yes, yeah, okay. Song of Soaring. See, this is why you're here. You're here to... Yeah. You're here to catch yeah. me when I fall. Exactly. Okay, and since we don't have Ocarina, what we'll instead do is just kill ourselves to damage work. Just kidding, we use Ocarina items. You can explain that. Uh, yeah, so when you... Uh, when a bomb explodes on the, la on the is it last possible frame, I think, before Link puts his hands down, if you use some kind of cutscene item, in that case, I assume it was Deku Mask. Um, yep. It just it sort of defaults to Link using the Ocarina, and so that's one way you can use uh, Ocarina without actually having an Ocarina. Yeah, that doesn't solve everything though. By the way, because um, we still need to learn Song of Healing. If we don't have Song of Healing, we can't get Zora Mask, and Zora Mask is absolutely required to beat the game. So, we need to get the real Ocarina somehow. So I assume doing the Anjun Cafe quest is to get the Ocarina? Because that, that definitely <laughs> okay. gets you the Ocarina. No, it's just a flex. We've been over okay. this. Uh, and we are also not going to SRM the Ocarina because SRM is banned for the rest of the run. We only used it to get the DQ mask and that's it. Okay, so it's a little faster to Void and Hess here because I want to get to Pirate's Fortress. And when you're Human Link, you swim really slow. Um, anything that I do from now until getting the Ocarina, you can assume helps me in getting the Ocarina. Except the Kayfabe quest. That does not help me getting the Ocarina. But... There is a reason that we want to get to Pirate's Fortress. Once I know how you solved the problem, um, yeah, my rules were a little bit different. I wanted to unequip Deku Mask, but yeah, there's no way to do this without Deku, I think. Yeah, or is we, there? We, we, use, we use the Deku Mask. Like, once yeah. we have it equipped, it is fair game. Um, we have to hover here to the loading zone to Pirate's Fortress because in Majora's Mask, the out-of-bounds water will void you out. So we have to land directly in it. And okay, we are one third of the way through the run, and we have almost nothing to show for it. Still need to beat all of the dungeons, and get the Ocarina, and some healing. And you're just sitting around here? Just hitching a ride? <laughs> yeah, Human Link swims very slow. Blind guard, yeah, those guys can't see directly behind them.
Can't MM have us crash the game? That would be new to me. Uh, I think that's only Mega Flips. I think you're probably thinking of Mega Flips. If you mess up a Mega Flip uh, mid hover, it can crash the game. But I that's am. not really a. It's not really a thing with tasses and stuff like this. Yeah, what's uh, way more common is S crash, like this trick here. This yeah. can crash much more easy. They're all the same concept. You're rolling on the same frame. You know that uh, that you can skip this with time stop, which is banned. Oh yeah, I'm stupid. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I think you can technically do it with pause buffering, but it's probably not worth it. Oh, who knows? Well, we want to make an entertaining run. Yeah. This cutscene is entertaining, so. I love this cutscene. It's my favorite. It's lore. Oh yeah, this is also a good time to mention that time basically only moves when you see the clock. So whenever you don't see the clock on the screen, uh, time's probably staying still. Also, that cutscene was a little weird. Oh, so that's why the, the text box came up to like just save that little bit of game time? No, it was just cool. Oh, okay. I mean, it might have saved a little time, but... Yeah, yeah, probably the weird. Okay, so the reason we were actually here was to get the hookshot, which is the item in this chest. Sorry for spoilers. Now we have everything we need. No, we don't. But almost. It's slightly faster to drink um, things as Deku. Yeah, don't forget the hydrate, guys. Okay. And here's why we got rid of the nut. Um, because without the nut, we can do an ESS scoop. Um, by trying to use the item and failing, and then um, using the bottled item, we can duplicate a bottle over that slot. So now we have a bottle over nut slot, and then we just got rid of the fairy, so we have two empty bottles now. Okay, we got milk. We actually skipped a text box there. Which you wouldn't have known if I didn't tell you, so that's why I pointed it out. It's pretty funny, the second text box of, of the Garmin bro only activates when you walk close to him. Okay, so... The only reason I just warped to Snowhead is because where you can warp is based off of your map cursor. So if Snowhead is on your map, you can warp to Woodfall, which is where I actually wanted to go. Um, and from here, we're going to get Ocarina um, using Get Item Manipulation, which I have to spoil because otherwise I have no time to explain this. Um, so, in order to... Actually, I don't even, I don't even know what to say for this. Uh... That's not that important. Just know that, um... 
This is, this is like a Turkenheimer trick. I don't know anything about how this trick works. No, I didn't Wait. find this. Oh my god. <laughs> this was spawned in <laughs> MM3D. But yeah. This is there's a, no, there's a method of GIM. So you will open the chest, but then not get what actually is in there. Oh, was that drinking milk as you open the chest? <laughs> that was remote hookshot, which I will gladly explain later. Which is how we got... Uh, get item man manipulation in the first place. Or wait, it did did that give you Ocarina? So yes. we we use we use remote hookshot to activate uh open A in front of the chest and open A um keeps the get item state of the chest so that when you enter water um you get the you get an item based off of that. Sorry okay, for that explanation. Um, so there so there's Ocarina. Yeah, um, but if you know the zombie have an ocarina of time, it's basically the same um, state. Except uh, we didn't see it for long because uh, he just jumped into the water. Yeah, it just happened so quickly. Um, and yeah, as some people, astute viewers, congratulate yourself for noticing this. Once we get ocarina, time moves normally again. So now we're at like normal speed. Time isn't like extremely fast anymore. Although you still don't have inverted song time or double song time, right? Correct. And we will never get it. We don't have any song of time. So that means we also can't like store song of time or anything like that either. Um, but yeah, I will explain Remote Hookshot, because that will come up again. As for Gim, you can look it up on zeldaspeedruns.com. I, I guess I can, I can do a... Knowledge. I can try to do a, like a really quick explanation. But basically, um, you have a game in a state where it thinks you're supposed to get an item, uh, but it didn't go all the way through, and normally the way that the game would give you the item is if you resurface in the water, because normally... If you're like diving or something, you can't get the item until you actually resurface. And uh, if you go in front of a chest before you actually get that item, it can change the value of that item. Then you go into the water and you can get this completely different item. In that case, um, that chest back at Woodfall changed the item into Ocarina. So then you just go in the water and then out comes Ocarina. I think in MM, most items end up being Ocarina with GIM, right? Yeah. yeah. Some uh, Night Arrows. Yeah, in, yeah in, in OOT, there's like a lot of different items that different chests can be, but in MM, they're like very concentrated on either being yeah, Ocarina, Ocarina of Time or Light Arrows or something like that. Yeah, you, you will never see Gim being used for anything other than those two items. Remember that, though. Well, with SRM. Oh, oh you mean in this run, yeah? Yeah, because we don't have SRM. It's it's banned. Yeah, but you could use SRM to then give him something else, but that's redundant and stupid. Now, instead of all that nerd talk, that those are just some cool hesses. That's something the viewers can really appreciate. So, don't worry, I got you guys. Yeah, always love a good Hess. Looks like especially yes, as adapter. Especially the nervous Hesses, the uh, the nosy Hesses. I love those. I said nervous Hess, not nosy Hess. <laughs> nervous because it looks like he's shaking. Okay. Isn't that actually slower because it's in a zigzag? I think it is slower. I don't do it that often. It's cool though. It yeah. is cool. And it is a low tide. Which means that I could just do whatever I want. Which I do. You'll find that I do do whatever I want. Oh, no Z, yes. I meant no space the letter Z. Okay. 
Okay. Time doesn't move here, so none of that mattered. But now we can finally get Song of Healing because <laughs> I've never what we needed for that was Ocarina. I I've never seen them shake uh, Human Link like that. It looked really weird. So yeah, if you have Ocarina but not Song of Healing, then he teaches the song to you. This will also give us the real Deku Mask. So earlier, like, we didn't have the real one, it was just equipped on C, so we weren't allowed to pause and equip over it, or else we would just lose access to uh, Deku. And then we wouldn't be able to get Hookshot if we did that. Oh, well, I have to that. correct myself. Um, anything else could also work in Ocarina slot. So if you have a glitched bottle or something, that would also work. Yeah, it just checks that it's not empty. Alright, so first cycle is finally over. Now that we got the Deku Mask. <laughs> 41 minutes, dude. That's so slow. And day two. Yeah. We're almost halfway through. What did you do? Still haven't entered a dungeon yet. Well, I mean, just like no major glitches, glitches speedrun, 41 minutes. In and then go in the first dungeon. Um, someone asking if this is faster than doing first cycle. Um, in a speedrun, you would not arbitrarily use SRM once and then not use it. You would just use SRM and then proceed to do whatever you're doing because it's faster. And that would be faster than going through first cycle. This is a completely different challenge where we need to do this because we need Zora Mask in order to beat the game. And we also need to turn human before then in order to meet the constraints of the challenge. So everything that we've done so far has been necessary. Except KFA quest, because that was a flex. Yeah, it's just SRM just for that one thing for getting Deku Mask in first cycle just because that's what makes it interesting. Uh, SRM setup is possible RTA. Um, there's a speedrunner named, I think, Jake. Jake's ESR. He helped me learn some stuff about it. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just following... Uh, instructions. But yeah, people do it re in real time. Well, not as quickly as this. Like, unbuffered, that was impressive. Yeah, so this is this cool scene walk where you can just walk up this mountain here and skip uh, climbing the big ladder way faster. And cooler. Yeah, no reason to ever not do that. Yeah. Why do we need Goron? Because Goron's fast. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Just, mm. just keep it in there. We'll get to that. He's a fast guy. Goron is good for game time. You'll you'll find that I'm Goron for a lot of the remainder of this. Sorry for spoilers, but this cutscene gives us the Goron Mask. Never would have guessed. 
Actually, the cutscene after this cutscene gives us Goron Mask. I know okay. that because you can wrong rob to that cutscene with SRM. Okay, so we still need Zora Mask. And then we can start doing stuff, because it's getting kind of late. It's already 103. Okay, so here we are getting Zora Mess because it's required to beat the game. Um, he is in a different de position depending on the day. So, day two, he's all the way over here. Nothing I can really do about that. Does he always get farther out each day or is like one day closer? Um, first day is the closest, second day is the farthest, third day, he's like next to the owl platform. Okay. So this is the worst day to do it, but this is the could day you, that I had to do it. Could you not have uh, pushed him to the shore earlier? Uh, I, I was going to, but two, two reasons why I couldn't. One is because I didn't have Ocarina, so time was moving faster. And oh, also, yeah. if I did, it would have turned day while I was hovering into... Uh, Pirate's Fortress, which would have mm. messed everything up. Um, and you can grab him to get a, a faster cutscene of this, but that loses time, so there's not really a reason to do that. It loses game time, not real time. Yeah, special shoutouts to Enop, who now is always driving trains during this cutscene. Man, I think that's almost, what, like nine years old now? Eight or nine years old. <laughs> the special shoutouts to Enop thing? Yeah. I wouldn't know, I wasn't there. Eight years. Dude, I didn't know what speedrunning is before 2018. And you still know that, that old reference? Well, yeah. I've watched a lot of videos. Good. Dude, it's super unpopular in Germany. It's not my fault. Oh yeah, greetings from Germany. Okay, so I'm actually warping to Great Bay Coast instead of just moving there because it takes less game time to do that. And I'm, I'm extra like that instead of just walking here because I'm trying to go to Pinnacle Rock right now. And here we have a super swim. Um, Did you not grab the bone? Well, I explained super swim. 
<laughs> yeah, Superstorm is when you, uh, you can, uh, elongate the amount of time that you're underwater without losing speed by alternating B and A with rhythm. Um, Dude, I check out the Germans in chat. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Okay, so those that are familiar with Majora's Mask know that there are seven eggs that you need to collect for the egg quest. Um, we're only going to get one egg. I'm not going to say how, even though it's very common in speedruns, so a lot of you know the answer, but we'll still explain as we do it, for those that don't know, which is valid. If you don't know how I'm going to do this with one egg, you are extremely valid. And I will explain for you. Hey, you don't even have a Pona. Don't you need a Pona? <laughs> we don't need a Pona for this run. Can't get a Pona anyway, because a Pona is day one only, and we can never go back to day one. Alright, so we are going to do Equip Swap to duplicate the egg, which mechanically the way to do that is to have your menu cursor over the uh, item that you want, and then switch screens, and then when you go back to the screen, um, you have a frame to um, equip an item over, over the C slot, in this case Moon's Tear, which is why I got Moon's Tear. So for those of you that took note of that when I said to, that's why. That's why we got it. Um, it only works on items that are close enough to the borders, like Ocarina or Moon's Tear. Um, yeah, it has to be the, the first item that the cursor moves to when you switch screens. Yeah. Also, by the way, when you would um, move to the map screen before unpausing, you would save one frame every time. So you lost seven frames here. Oh no, six frames. For every dupe. Unoptimized. Wait, what was the optimization? Mm -hmm. Alright, we're good now. We got we got the eggs. It's that easy. We can actually skip this cutscene by just mashing Ocarina. You could try that at home. It works, no matter what console you're on. Yeah, it's like a two-frame window too, so it's not really that hard. It's like a ten-frame window on PAL. Pretty easy. No, just kidding. Okay, finally we're gonna do our first dungeon. Near the end of day two. Still have to beat all four dungeons before time runs out. Do we need Goron? Oh. Yeah, I actually forgot to mention something. Um, we're gonna be getting all fairy rewards oh, too. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Just a flex? Yeah, as a flex. Okay, I think this is RTA viable. <laughs> Easily. Like, even without time stop, probably. Or day resets. Did 
you get the fairy mask? Um, good question. We actually can't get the fairy mask. Oh yeah. We Wait, got no. magic. We got magic in this one cycle, and once you have magic, you can't get the great fairy mask in the same cycle. Well, that's going to be interesting. Actually, yeah, that's actually... So that means all fairy yeah. rewards with no yeah. fairy mask. Yeah, yeah we, have to, my temple. <laughs> we have to get all the fairies, like, manually. Physically touch all the fairies instead of having them come to us. So, that fairy, for example, we wanted to hit with Bo because Bo drops it down instead of exploding it. That way we could just grab the fairy um, in the water instead of having it like hover in the air. Um, here we use action swap to light the torch. Um, I don't really know how action swap works. It is very mysterious to me. But it makes connections somehow. Yeah, it's it's short version is you do like two weird actions that are like interfering with each other and it can cause some other weird thing to happen. In that case, uh, shooting an arrow, shooting a lit arrow. Yeah, so in order for that arrow shot, we needed stick and we needed um, quiver because without the quiver, we couldn't shoot the arrow. Oh, are you doing the thing? Yes, no, nice. wait, no. I thought you'd jump into the water, that would be cool, because Deku just keeps burning and not voiding because he's hopping on water. That wouldn't that wouldn't help us though. But yes, we could have done that. Uh, it's important to not pick up the nut there because um, we want to keep the bottle um, that we duped over the nut. So if at any point we grab a nut, it will remove that bottle that we have that we want to keep. Okay, and now we're doing our first weird shot, which is basically an aiming quirk that uses similar inputs to Hess. Um, it it basically just changes where you aim, so we can we can hook shot like beyond walls using that. Yeah, it uses like certain glitchy animations that happen when you try to hook shot while having high speed. And then uh, you can hookshot under the ground. That that one in particular was really cool. Like hookshotting to the top of the room. Yeah, I think that's used in all the fairy rewards. Okay. So we got all the fairies. And now we're going to use remote hookshot again. This is a trick that was found by Anonymous Tipster, which I will get into that later. But basically the way it works is that if you have the hookshot in your hand and a bottle equipped and then you drink milk, um, when you pull out hookshot again, uh, it will shoot automatically, which gives you several glitchy effects. Um, we're able to use two hookshots to... Uh, basically be pulled by two different points so we're like in hookshot mode quote unquote similar to silly mode um but that'll keep us at the same y coordinate so when we go downstairs um we're pushed upwards through the ceiling and from there we can just travel to uh we can travel to the boss loading zone because the boss loading zone is always active okay so now that i explained that let's talk about Adola. 
Oh wait, I already killed them. Okay, so we're good. The only thing I really need to know about Adol is that bomb flowers do more damage to him. Also, it's time doesn't intense stuff. Yeah. <laughs> time doesn't move once you beat the boss, so I can kind of just I can just farm. I can also show this cool thing. This works on a real Nintendo 64, by the way. The boss or the yeah the boss door is like displayed over the heart container. You're just skipping the heart. Yeah, we don't need hearts. This is also the three heart challenge. Can I do it? Oh man, that sounds that sounds a bit <laughs> difficult. <laughs> okay, and we have to watch all of the giants cutscenes. There's no way to skip it. We don't have song of time. And if we did, we still couldn't because that would reset time. And even if we could use Song of Time, we still couldn't skip this because we need this song to beat the game. So that's like three reasons to not skip this cutscene. Yeah, even even in categories where you can skip the Giants cutscenes, you can never skip the first one specifically because of Oath to Order. Except for SRM categories. Um, I guess now I could kind of explain that remote hookshot, which is prominent in this run, was found by someone that anonymously just described it to me in my ask.fm inbox. Who does not have an identity. I just, I literally have someone that just tells me Majora's Mask glitches anonymously. But we actually do know who Anonymous Tipster really is. Um, because when Remote Hookshot was found, um, someone in Discord was like, we need to be able to properly thank this person. So with screenshot evidence, it is Javil. Um, a lot of people probably don't know who Javil is, but Javil is a very old Majora's Mask glitch hunter. Found um, a lot of things regarding Zeroth Day. It could be anyone in chat due to a non whatever that word is, a nomin whatever. You know what I'm talking about. This cutscene only plays if you beat Woodfall first, by the way. This current one. Okay. So talking to the Deku princess as a flex because there's really no reason to be doing this it, it doesn't this cutscene <laughs> it doesn't waste game time I guess yeah cutscenes don't waste game time so as Turkenheimer mentioned there is a way to clip into here uh, that's slower we want lore in this playthrough Uh, we have to manually leave because you can't do Song of Soaring in the temple. It will just take you back to the entrance. Oh, 
how many SRMs would it take to get all masks in one cycle? I guess one more than this. Then you're good to go. Um, yeah, I mean, certain masks are locked off. You can't... If you get Couples Mask, for example, you can't get Blast Mask. Um, and you can't get All Might Mask either. Yeah. So those but are with, locked off. With SRM, you can just set flex at this point. Well, actually, SRM, you can do anything. SRM Maybe you would need yeah. two. I don't know. Maybe you need two more SRMs. Hmm. But yeah, th this run is not that. We, we're we not getting every mask. Because we can't. Without additional SRM. And we're not doing any additional SRM. So, we are not getting all the masks. As you can tell by us not getting Great Fairy Mask, for example. Alright, that, that's a cool little trick there where you can target Cafe through the wall just to save walking up the stairs. And it saves game time. True. My cat's blocking the screen again. She does this. Hey, that's me. Uh, someone in chat asked, do you plan the whole route before doing a, starting a recording like this? Like, uh, before doing a challenge like this? This was actually the hardest route that I've ever done. Ever. Because of the game time. It took me a lot of, like, actually playing through the route to, like, come up with something that works. So... Everything you see here, all this coordination was not easy to figure out. Yeah, I imagine like with how tight time of day is in this and like nobody being able to manipulate time, it must be really difficult. Yeah, game time specifically is the challenge. Uh, without game time as a factor, I'm pretty good at um, figuring out like the order to do things. And... Okay, so we continue the cafe quest, um, and now we're going to do Stone Tower Temple. Just kidding, we're not going to do it yet. Um, but love we can't- the, Love the fall voice there. <laughs> can't warp directly to Ikana, because Ikana on the map lets you warp there. Also, that's a Goron roll clip. It works like a ground clip. What's a ground clip? Take it away. Uh, have a high enough <laughs> downward speed and horizontal speed as you hit the ground in certain places you can clip through a wall. There you go. I'm keeping you on your toes. You always have to be ready. Yeah. G giving me a pop quiz. Um, but yeah. Uh, we entered here because in order to warp to Ikana on the map, you need Ikana on the map. So it's easier to just go to Stone Tower um, to get to Ikana. And we're doing, we have to do this mask if we want it um, before Stone Tower Temple, because once you beat the temple, you can't get this mask anymore. And why are we getting this mask? As a flex. We don't need it for anything. Just a flex. Actually, for that Gorm rule clip, how hard was that? Was that kind of easy, or did it take a while to get? Um, it was really easy for me because I'm built different. But for a normal person, it might be hard. Okay. They have to do setups to do an RTA. Now you will get the chest here, I guess, underwater or under the ice. I think that actually has a glitch bounty. I don't know if it's active or not, but I'm pretty sure there's a glitch bounty if you can open that chest during winter. Yeah, with SRM, I guess. Probably. <laughs> without, without arbitrary code execution, I'm guessing. Otherwise, it's trivial. 
dude. You can you can change ROM data. Is that also too much? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't put the bounty. I can't say what's alive and what's not alive. I mean, you could just change the ROM and where the chest spawns. Okay, so here's a cool way to get Rock Sirling. If you hit the chandelier a first time, uh, the chandelier will actually shake back and forth. And because of that shaking, if you go up a second time, you can go on roll and actually hit the pot that has the Rock Sirling in it. Um, very cool trick. It's also pretty old. And it found use in this run. To get this mask that we definitely don't need. For any reason other than a flex. Dude, are you flexing on me? For yes. because of my new category? Wait, no, I just started this out a few weeks ago. So you could Shout have out. known. Shoutouts to the uh observant viewers that notice the tech tight jump through the hoop. Only the astute viewer caught that. Nice. We'll do it again. Oh, not quite. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah, this game desyncs a lot, so when I was making this, I had to like redo a lot of things over and over. It's specifically a Majora's Mask thing that it desyncs often when you're making a LOTAD or a TAS or whatever. Yeah, that's just uh, trouble with making TASs sometimes. TASs are all just based on specific inputs being replayed, assuming that everything should replay the exact same way with the exact same inputs every time. But emulators are not perfect, and if anything goes wrong, then those same inputs are not going to cause the same thing to happen. And that's just uh, the biggest pain of doing any tasks is just sometimes you're going to run into desyncs like that. Uh, I do want to clear the air that this is not a max percent first cycle. And I'm not just saying that. You can tell for certain because I didn't get the hard container. Um, this is just... The, the challenge is get all fair rewards and also get as many masks as you can. How many is that? We'll find out. But as you can tell, I've been getting a lot of masks. Would you maybe have beaten the aliens in time? Uh, I actually made the artistic decision to not do aliens, which I will explain. Um, you could aliens? Have lost. <laughs> yeah. The, the al <laughs> aliens are only available night one, so before you have bow. So in order to get. Romani mask. You would have to pause from 1.30 or whenever the alien fight starts. You would have to pause over and over all the way until day two. And I made the executive decision because I can to not do that. So I'm not getting Romani mask. But if you, if you want to see that, um, watch A button challenge. And I'll pass on a few runs of that. Yes, that is a thing that you can watch if you choose to watch. It is a, it is possible to get Romani Mask without the... Do you know how long all those pauses take? Uh, I'm not sure, but... It, for second it, stage. It, it, it advances time, like one frame per pause. So you'd have to just like count how long a pause takes and count how long like... How many like game time frames is needed. I was just not interested in doing that. But other than that, we get every mask. Yes. Every mask that we can get. Yeah, game time updates during draw a draw.
Oh my god, the butler race will be interesting, hopefully. Yeah, I wish I could have had double magic for butler, but since the Deku Princess is in a bottle, I wanted to do it before I did Snowhead. So, only single magic for Butler, unfortunately. Okay, we have Fig. We listen to Fig, so it doesn't exactly update on draw. Okay, let's do this race. This race is always so cool with Grand Mask. <laughs> Too bad I don't have enough magic. <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm waiting for him here because he goes faster when you're, like, slightly ahead of him. So, I'm trying to, like, optimize the game time. Like, I could finish the race faster, but it would take longer to get the mask, which is no good. Just enough magic to get past that. Waiting again. Petrie asks, couldn't find a way to roll across the flame circle platforms. To which I respond, the video I used for reference was uploaded by Petrie, who didn't do that. So that's my response. Wow. If it's possible, I, I don't know. I didn't even try it. This mask too. Nice clip. Yeah, normally you have to get Romani mask to enter here, but thanks to that uh, ground clip, you can just clip in here early. Literally breaking in. So I guess I have a theory question, which is how exactly is it possible that during this section there's four different links playing at the same time? You're just supposed to use your imagination. Okay, use your imagination and answer the question. <laughs> you just imagine four links. <laughs> just think of it and then it's real. Why don't you finish as human? Like, you know, when he walks fast? I think I did Deku last because going from Zora 
Yeah, that makes sense. Cro crossing the stage, right to left. But yeah, if you finish this as human, then you get get a bunny hood effect. For whatever reason. I actually forgot about that. But it doesn't matter, because I'm not like walking out of here anyway. Maybe it applies uh, the movement speed of one of the other forms. Also, one thing I learned um, for the car fire thing um, in, in Sakon Silent, if you turn some transformation before you turn car fire, then car fire walks in uh, with the movement speed of the transformation. Yeah, I always wondered why that sounds nothing like Dollar of the Windfish, like the actual one. They didn't think anyone would notice. Okay, so now we are going to enter Snowhead Temple without the lullaby. Oh man, is this all, all Goron roll okay. lullaby skip? All Goron. That's the best way to do it. You make the exciting face while making this? Yes. There's one person who did this in RTA, by the way. Hey, Jock. So it's possible. And then we're in. Yeah, that actually took me zero re-records. Wow. Okay, I wouldn't more than that, but I didn't count. So we do action swap again to shoot a lit arrow to get through that ice block. There's no way around this ferry, unfortunately. You, ha you have no choice but to push the block all the way in to spawn the chest. Nice recoil flip. Huh? I actually made a script to tell me like the exact location to put that bomb chew. The yeah, things actually... that you guys Go ahead. I I said my piece. No, I, I was just saying uh Seeing the ways to like get the fairies without fairy masks is actually really interesting. Yeah, there will be a room. The room yeah, there, yeah, there's the, one room I'm thinking yeah. of that I imagine After is going to be a, a pain. Stay tuned. Actually, yeah, at least one more even. So there's a fairy in the ceiling here. Um, so hopefully earlier in the run when I said to look up hovering, hopefully you did that so that this part isn't confusing. I like the N64 explosion. I like the lag.
Uh, fairy Mask was explained earlier, but basically you can't get Magic and Fairy Mask in the same cycle. And this is all one cycle and we already got Magic. Yep. So Fairy Mask is just straight up impossible. Yeah, in Rando it works a little bit differently. Right now, so normally you need Deku Mask to get Fairy Mask. But yeah, is it only possible in different cycles? Um, it's You need two cycles specifically because of the Stray Fairy. The Stray Fairy doesn't respawn. Yeah, but if uh, with, with cheats... Can't you get magic and fairy mask at once? Um, maybe, maybe. I, 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 don't, don't, I, don't, I don't use cheats, I play legit. Okay, that was cool. Yeah, that Goron roll to the pillar, I just improvised that. I'm like a jazz player. I'm like. And anti gravity. <laughs> I can actually move a little bit during that cutscene, so I take that time to fall to the bottom floor. Wait, how does nice. that work? Yeah, how does that... what was that? W what part of that was confusing? The walking while still aiming with the bow. You could just do that. I don't know what you're talking about. I was uh, mashing the bow button, if that changes anything. But yeah, you can just walk while hitting the bow, and that's a thing that you can do. Oh, is this more, uh... Yeah, we're using Remote Hookshot again, but a different feature of it. Here we use Vertical Speed Conservation to get a, a nice jump to get to the top floor of the entire temple. Um, which, the way that that works is that when you hookshot something, you have... you're given, uh, speed that is applied to the hookshot um, and using this trick we can basically apply that speed outside of the hookshot which if we set it up right we can get a big jump using that yeah this berry is also maybe interesting oh wait can you just <laughs> nice ah yep thanks to that uh Icicle, we can get up there. Otherwise, we would have had a hover. Got the fairy exactly as it turned day. Okay, so hopefully, you like that remote hook jump, because I'm going to just do it again now. Nice. There you go. Oh my god, yeah, you did that. Thing. Yeah, that's a cool new thing that Pushy found. 
Yeah, that, that is a new trick found by Pushy Misumi. Making that, that BK skip even simpler than it already was. Well, the angle is, I don't know how precise. Oh. Well, nah, not too precise. Um, as for without index warp, there's a lot of ways that this challenge could have been done. Like, a lot of the decisions that I made were for entertainment purposes. I wanted to make the most entertaining run, showcasing um, even first cycle as possible. So, there's many variations that could have been done instead, such as least game time, no Sangha Soaring, no Index Warp, all that. Or maybe Gitchness. Never. No, that wasn't even considered. <clears throat> no. No, remote hookshot's not possible in OOT. Uh, it's actually... The reason it happens in MM is because of uh, some some extra code they added to milk in MM that doesn't exist in OOT. And a side effect of that uh, ends up causing yeah. remote hookshot. Wasn't it that they tried to fix something and then made it worse somehow? This is an advertisement for Fig O2's YouTube channel. Yeah, Fig Fig wow. has a, a whole video on this. If you want to uh, learn learn all about that. Oh yeah. By the way, we're already on the last day. Oh no. <laughs> we still have. Great Bay and Stone Tower and their fairies and their fairy rewards um, and a bunch of masks. So there's a lot to do with a little bit of time. Can I do it? Stay tuned. And I only have three hearts. That was me drinking water. Okay. Alright, so that's two dungeons done, right? Yep. Um, still need to get the fairy rewards too. Um, but yeah, two dungeons. Oh, yeah. Still, still missing a bunch of masks. But I I'll like, I'll like talk more about the masks as we're doing them. But. There's a lot of content. Uh, pressing Ocarina in midair does not pause time. Not, it does not pause game time in MM. I don't know if it pauses like timers. Do you know? Um, I think that's an Ocarina time thing. Yeah, yeah, it's I, definitely OT, but I, I guess it probably doesn't happen in MM. But I'm not sure because MM just uses timers much more rarely. But at the very least, it does not affect game time, no. Yeah, everyone's favorite minigame for a mask. This is the best part. I'm so glad that you can roam up into this cutscene for the mask. That was pretty good RNG. Did you manipulate anything there, or was that just just good luck? Um, little column A, little column B. All right. 
I, I didn't like go crazy, but um, when you load s save states in here, like your movement affects like the way that chicks move. It's not just like when you enter the room in the first place. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of manipulation to get it clean. Because I care about you guys. I care about a good viewing experience. Okay, so actually getting double magic now, so we have it. Can't just get the fairies, you have to actually turn them on. I don't remember, did you get uh, the great spin? Yes, I did. Um, I guess I zoned out a little bit. I mean, I'll use great spin, so you can... You don't have to take my word for it, you'll just see me use it. Spoilers. Maybe, maybe you cheated? Maybe. So now we are going to do Great Bay Temple, um, meaning we have to get to the turtle and play New Wave Bossa Nova, which we got earlier in the run. Is uh, warping straight to um, Zora Cape like one of those things where you need the Zora Cape map icon to warp to it? Yeah. I'm glad you asked. So here I am entering Zora Hall. Ooh. Okay. In game time That's, saving. That puts Zora Hall on the map. And then you can index warp to Zora Cape. I see. Which saves like two or three seconds of swimming to the owl directly. Very nice. Worth it. Worth the cutscene, worth the extra song is playing, worth everything. Um, unfortunately, we cannot skip this cutscene. Can you not pause? Yeah, into the, the loading zone. Well, in game time would be worse by a few seconds. I don't know. Yeah, yeah if you want to, like, the Japanese method. The... Yeah. No, I didn't want to do that. Every time you pause it, makes your game time go up by a frame because of the reasons we already talked about. But the bright side is we get to see this cutscene with normal Link instead of Zora Link. And we're getting lore.
and we're getting additional lore from this cutscene too. But it's all worth it because then we actually get good gameplay. The fairies are the best part of the run, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, in dungeon, fairy collecting always seems like the best part of these kinds of MM runs. Especially Greg Bay Temple. Yeah. Because the Great Bay Temple is kind of the coolest dungeon, also in RTA, but um, also the hardest, so a Tess or a low Tess will not have that problem. I'm gonna pop quiz you on Wedge Clip, so be ready for that. Uh, Alright. Just, just like, formulate it in your mind before I ask. So, I would have loved to do this fairy by using Hess and a stick. Like, doing a Hess with a stick through the torch. But I timed it and it was just, like, way too slow to justify. So Did I you didn't... have shot through the torch? Like, just shoot four normal arrows very quickly? You're too short in this game to do that. Did you do that? I mean, what? standing in front of the torch. Uh, uh, well, let's just assume that what I did was optimal. Let's just yeah. assume that I'm correct. And you're still doing the old method. Well, I guess it's faster, technically. But it's so much harder. There's a new method, which is just super easy. Oh, ledge clip. Am I supposed to explain that? Yes. Okay, yeah, so if you grab a ledge and you target the wall uh, right next to it, right as you grab it, when you target a wall, it makes Link face towards that wall. And you can still do it on the first frame that you grab a ledge. And so the way that Link kind of contorts his body as he's facing towards the wall while grabbing a ledge makes him clip into the ledge that you're grabbing and they can just fall through it and that room by the way was um, actually the last room with yeah, the we, boss door. we skipped uh switching the water direction which is the main gimmick of the temple by doing that ledge clip we were able to um swim through the out of bounds water without going out um to get to that room, and then did a super swim to load the ferry. So we don't need to switch the water direction anymore. Every time I see milk equipped now, I get excited. I had no <laughs> idea you could shot. do it like that. Like, there's an RDA setup for that, but, but not like this. Not like this. Oh, more oh hey, it's a quick quim. Oh, pop quiz coming up. Everyone in chat, close your ears. I'm giving ZFG time to explain. Uh, again. Oh wait, we explained I, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, are you doing game again? Stay tuned. Oh, oh, I think I know what's coming up. Oh, someone in chat said, the movement in this run is godly. I just picked a random chat message to read, but yeah, there you go.
All right, well, here's the gim. Pay attention to the pause screen and see if you can figure out what we get. Or look back to your notes that you took and you'll know what we got. But yeah, that, that was another good item manipulation where you essentially store Link supposedly getting an item, but delay it and then you can get a different item by going in front of a chest and resurfacing in water. And there's an item that I saw there that wasn't in the inventory before that looks yep. very yellow. White arrows. Yeah. And uh, that's because we did it in front of the compass chest. It is the chest that matters. Also, that would crash on N64, at least yep. if you don't do some further stuff with. I don't. I, I think some. If, if you show some other item, maybe. Yeah, for both crashes. SRM and White Arrow Gim, I had to um, make a modification for it to work on Bizhawk, um, so it behaves like VC, thanks to the help of Turkenheimer. That was a flex. The Why did you take damage? Because it looked cool. Yeah, but how? My, I mean... I think just the fall distance. Oh. That is extended arrow. This is on the test, explain. Uh, yeah, so you can... You can shoot an arrow through the wall there, and you can hit uh, Gior before the fight even starts. This also skips a cutscene of when the fight starts, which is like 30 seconds long. And also prevents the music from starting. Yeah, just... it, lets you, it lets you aim through the wall. Um, it works with Hookshot too, but... You Hookshot's don't, obviously like, not going to reach, yeah. Yeah, you don't aim far enough for you to be able to like shoot through walls with Hookshot. Actually yeah. an MM extended Hookshot cannot shoot through walls as far as I know. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. Even even if you could though, he's so far down that there's yeah. no way you'd be able to hit. Um, so yeah, time's not moving. It doesn't matter what I do. I'm getting magic here, but no, no deep down that I don't need to do this. There's no reason for me to do this except I want to, and you have to deal with that. If we didn't skip the Gaia cutscene, would that maybe have sa saved some in-game time? Um, Probably I not, because I, 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 think, so. I think your first hit is way faster if you do the skip than if you don't. Because if you don't, you have to wait a bit longer, right? Oh yeah. Well, it has. Uh, maybe it has, yeah. Yeah. It's about entertainment. It's a low TED. Was it, was it just coincidence that the dungeons are in order? Um, I chose to do them in order. So it's not just by a coincidence the best well, part? There is like some reasons, like, it. I prefer to get White Arrows in Great Bay Temple, so I would do Great Bay before um, Stone Tower. And Woodfall gives you bow, so I wanted to do Woodfall first. And then Snowhead gives you double magic, which is useful. So... Like, I chose the order, but I chose an order that makes sense. The way you can... Um, Zora bonk very precisely to skip the Hookshot there. But it's pretty stupid. Yeah, normally you're supposed to Hookshot. Um, that platform. I mean, you, you did, you did yeah. Though, yeah, the one before it, where I just like swim out of the water and grab it as Zora. You're not supposed to be able to do that. So don't tell anyone, but I did it anyway. Yeah, but Adrock found that setup where you can bonk even um, to the last pillar or the, the second last pillar. So you don't even need to hook shot. But it's, it's stupidly precise.
Sounds like he didn't know that. Oh, I was paying attention to the cutscene. Mm -hmm. I guess probably. I didn't catch any of that. Nice pausing on the, the frame where you're still waving. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to do Stone Tower Temple, and I'm not going to say just kidding this time, we're actually going to do it. Um, but because I banned Time Stop, we're not going to use Time Stop to get in. Normally you do Time Stop on the Switch, um, get on the Switch and then undo Time Stop, but I banned that trick. So we are pause buffering instead. There's probably a better way to do this too. Could you have used remote hookshot somehow to jump? Um, yeah, I probably could have done like remote hookshot. Well. But... <laughs> Well, you'll see. There's actually nothing, I just said you'll see because it makes it seem like something cool is coming up, like I did on purpose. But something cool is coming up. So, That's with cool. a weird shot, we could hookshot that crate um, and get out of bounds from that. And then, with a carefully placed mega side hop, um, load this map room, land directly next to this. Um, chest. That was so that's very a cool, cool. Um, yeah, so it's good to note that we we are starting this dungeon with white arrow, meaning um, we don't have to like wait to get it before doing white arrow stuff. We can just get everything out of the way as we go. Um, yeah, that's so if we wouldn't have gotten um, light arrows in Great Bay Temple, we could have gotten them there. Yeah, we we could have got them. Uh, I think it was I think it was a little better to get them in Great Bay Temple. Though. Yeah, we, we we would also have uh, needed water to remove the block. Correct. Oh. Yeah, no reason to not do this room right now. Why come back? I love all the lag in this room. Take advantage of the fact that Beemos is hookshotable twice. Yeah, also he voided out because um, he was an out of bounds water without floor beneath. So, unlike an Ocarina of Time, where you can just swim in out of bounds, in, in out of bounds water, no problem, you, you need floor beneath you in Majora's Mask. Correct. So I voided out because it's faster than swimming back. Just warp back to where we started. Oh uh, yeah, Beemos are not hookshotable in Ocarina of Time like they are in Majora's Mask. But you have free zards. Not hookshotable than MM. Oh yeah, true. Okay, so that chest underwater, we'll come back for that. Keep that in the back of your mind. Don't forget about it. So here's something cool about Stone Tower, is that if you get on top of an upside-down chest, you can open it. So that lets us skip doing this chest in Inverted Stone Tower. And for those that remember, we're opening that chest now. You can cross that off your list. Yeah, that upside down chest you just opened in um, inverted that is uh, surrounded by a fire circle. Right. 
And we don't have we don't have great fairy mask, so it's extra slow to get it normally. We'd have to like go back up twice. Okay, so the Najiran blocks that chest. We had to get rid of it before we could open it. Come back for that fairy, we didn't forget it. Okay, is this... Uh, oh wait, I forgot about this fairy. I was, uh, was saying, why don't you just weird shot? We are just weird shotting. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of weird shot in this run, surprisingly. So we already have light arrows. We're only fighting Garo Master to get into the next room. But pay attention to this fight. It's really cool. Dang, he just keeps missing you. There you go. So, yeah, nice, time, 64 by explosion. Time doesn't move as long as I keep this text box up. And you're able to walk during this text box. Nice. Um, I'm still doing optimal movement anyway, even though I don't have to. Okay, this is the fairy that we needed to be Garo Master for. Okay, so we're done with the first half of Stone Tower Temple. Almost. There's actually one more thing I'm gonna do before I leave. Yeah. Nice. Activate that chest uh, as I leave. Okay, so yeah, we still have to be inverted stone tower, but I'm not gonna do it just yet. Um, I want to get some explosives and um, get the heat mask since it is almost night three. So I just want to do that now. Okay, now we can do inverted stone tower. Astute viewers might remember me mentioning a new trick found by Pushy. Here's another one. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Very fast invert. That actually seems like so obvious thinking about it now. 
Those are the best tricks. Yeah. Alright. Here is actually the thumbnail of the video. 12 hours remain. We're on the last night now. Okay, so we are going to get on top of this upside down chest to open it, just like that underwater one, which you can do by getting to the ceiling and then shielding the chew. Now if I do open A before I open the chest, it actually keeps me on the chest because the stray fairy opens, or er, it appears at the top. Um, if I didn't do that, I would have fell down and had to re-hover to get it, since I don't have Great Fairy Mask. Of course, getting Giant's Mask. Yeah, how would you play Twin Mold without Giant's Mask? Okay, milk is equipped. ZFG is excited. Yeah. What could the next remote hook shot be? Oh, I know this tree. Press 1 in chat if you don't know this trick. Because you're extremely valid. Yeah, so th this trick is just uh, the wizard robe is vulnerable for what, one or two frames uh, right before he starts the cutscene where he like moves really fast. So if you shoot just at the right time, you can skip his little cutscene. Alright, so we got all the fairies. Now we just need to go to the boss room. Uh, the boss room is directly in front of us, by the way. Nice. So, for, that, for was that, a, that was are, a hook slide. Is that just like holding forward and that's it? Is there anything more okay. special with that? So the way that that works is... You... You do the remote hook shot but you, like, put yourself in the, like, the state where you can't move around by just using an item before you hookshot. So, like, you hookshot the chest, and then you stop yourself with the bottle, and then you pull out the hookshot, and then you just slide forward through walls. Okay, so, so you don't even have to, like, bother trying to control it? You, you have to aim yourself before you do it. Okay, okay. Like, like, the position where you start is what matters. You don't have any control of it. Yeah, and then Twin World fight mostly with arrows. For those who don't know, uh, fire and ice arrows do triple damage to the opposite color. Although, no ice arrows here, so... Just regular arrows on the red mode. 
regular arrows are more than good enough. Alright, so I beat all the dungeons and got all the fairies. It's only 8.43 p.m. I assure you, I have made the rest of the run very entertaining, so don't miss it. And also, you want to stay here after the run anyway. Ben Stevens says, tell them why. Yeah, after this run is premiered, we are premiering a run by Ben Stevens. I will say no more than that. 56. Yeah, we got one more coming up after this. Yeah, the double feature. Will there be an intermission? We'll probably take a, a short break. So there's still quite a bit of masks I still want to get. Um, I will talk about that in a little bit. Because um, I know when I want to mention it. That way it's easier to stay in everyone's head. And then if I mention it now, you have to just write it down to remember it, which is not optimal. Actually, do you know approximately how many masks you have right now? How many I have right now? Yeah. Let me figure that out. No. Someone in chat knows, probably. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure some nerd in chat has been keeping track. 12. Some very valid person that is not a nerd. can skip this cutscene, by the way, but I guess it's yeah. you, too well for the game time. Yes, you, can, you can skip them. Uh, I chose not to. Also, this fairy does not heal you. It's the only fairy who doesn't heal you. Correct. So, my magic is still low. Which is fine. Okay, so we are going to do Kayfei's hideout now, or er, well, Seikon's hideout now, um, which behaves pretty special. Like, notice that it's 9.09 right now. It's going to stay 9.09 the entire duration of this. Time doesn't move. So I, I'm kind of free to do whatever I want in the hideout. Um, but of note, if you beat Seikon's hideout during night, before midnight, it makes it midnight. Meaning I'm electing to skip forward about three hours as a flex. Also, since I can do whatever I want in here, I found a new way to beat the hideout. Oh no. Which is why I equipped milk. Alright, that was the real milk, by the way. So, that is the last remote hookshot of the run. 
It was a, a good a good finale. I liked it. Okay, yeah, as you can see by the bottom of the screen, it is midnight. We have six hours remaining to get six masks. And now that I got rid of the real milk, I can buy blue potion and put it in my real bottle. Since potion can only go in the real bottle, it can't go into the duplicated bottle. I equip swapped the blue potion because I wanted magic. That's it. That's the only reason I did that. Um, but now we have everything we need to get stone mask from here. So stone mask is one of the six masks I'll be getting. Fun fact, it wasn't known for a long time, at least in the speedrunning community, that Blue Potion is usable for Stone Mask. Did you? Like that, that eluded people for many years. I, I was routing something, I wasn't even thinking about it. Uh, blue Potion would not work. I had I the Gossip Blue Potion. <laughs> I had the Gossip Stone there, it brings up a text box. That doesn't actually stop game time. I didn't know that at the time. So I, I basically did that for no reason. Nice. Alright, now we're getting the captain's side. That's cool. Uh, you can open the fairy, or you can open this chest if you take damage and then hookshot it fast enough afterwards. Alright. So now, I want to mention that I imposed a challenge on myself to make things more interesting. So, one of the masks I'm going to get is the Mask of Truth, which is the Swamp Spider House. You get 30 skulls. So in order to make it more interesting, I decided to make a challenge. Is it possible to get that mask using only Goron and Digu? Meaning you wouldn't have access to sword or any projectiles to grab the tokens. So stay tuned. And that is that is exactly why I just got my sword stolen. You, you just wanted more more flexing power? Yeah, specifically to flex. This is the most arbitrary low chat I've ever seen. You're welcome. <laughs> so, I got my sword stolen so that I can buy it back as Deku Lake. So now, Human Link is still swordless, but Deku Link has the sword. Oh man. And as, you see, as you'll see, like, that'll be necessary to get one of the skulls. Also note that my rupee count was perfect. All of those rupees that I got, perfect culmination. Those rupees I farmed in Woodfall, calculated. I get a nut here that is also needed for this challenge. And one more thing. Cool. Um, yeah, I skipped the cutscene by entering that grotto. But take note of that, because that'll come up. Um, so there's a skull on the wall in the gold room. There's a golden room in the Swamp Spider House that Goron and Deku can't reach. So what you would have to do, of course, is to get... You plant a bean, ride the bean plant, and then you could get that skull. 
Dude. Like seriously, this this just looks like you were bored. Okay, so now we have everything we need. Um, we can go back and enter the uh, swamp spider house now. So there was actually a reason that I entered that grotto earlier, and that is because it saves the last grotto that I enter. So if I alt exit to a generic grotto, it takes me back to that last grotto. Nice, that's actually really cool. Alright, so let's do the challenge. We have basically no time. Considering not only do we need Mask of Truth, we need Kamaro Mask, and we need Postman Hat. Postman Hat takes a lot of game time because he delivers the mail, you have to wait for him to deliver it. And we need Couples Mask, so we have five... wait. Yeah, we have four masks to get still. So yeah, game time extremely matters right now, and we have basically none of it because of because of these self-imposed challenges. Um, what helps though is that every time you get a, a sculpture, it pops up text, and while that text is on the screen, the game time isn't moving. So instead of like getting all the skulls at once, like a speedrunner would do. I purposely space them out. I haven't seen that scrub getting woken up in forever. That's why we got the Deku sword, by the way, in order to get this skull. And we got the nuts because if you have nut, when you enter the flower, it'll reset um, your bee back to nuts. So then we can shoot again. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to shoot those hives. Wait, so is Deku Sword gone now? Yep, it's gone. We got it just to open that thing, and then that was it. I left and re-entered the room because um, every time you enter the room, the skull starts at like a determined location so we don't have to wait for this guy because i did that okay so time is extremely slim we need to get the postman moving or else this is actually impossible because there's no way to slow him down we can't like, we have to, like, wait for the postman, so we are, like, extremely time-sensitive right now. Keep in mind there's less than two and a half in-game hours left before the moon crashes. The moon crashes at 6 a.m. Okay, so it was at this point that I realized that Deku can't actually plant beans. Which is good, because there's so little time remaining that this was actually impossible without human. So now it's like, okay, forget all this. Let's just like, complete this. So Sounds I will good. be going, I will be going silly mode. That's a speedrun turn. It means as fast as possible in this context, specifically. Yeah, we want to be able to deliver the um, letter to Postman before 420. So keep 420 in mind.
There's a new weird shot that no one knew about. That's a cool That I don't have to climb the ladder. Not even looking at it. Nope. So the astute viewer will notice that I left a skull. I have no choice but to come back for it. Look at the game time. It's 4.11 already. So we we have to deliver this thing immediately. Like we, there's just no time to spare, not even to get the mask of truth. So we're still missing four masks. Less than two hours remaining. Final night song playing. Conditions are right. Delivered that with a few frames to spare because it's already 420. It's already past 420. That's how fast the time moves. This is our first time entering Termina Field since getting Ocarina, so we get this cutscene. So this is one mask down. We're getting four masks in the last 90 minutes. Classic. Uh, just to put things into like reference, one game hour is about 45 seconds in real life hours. Yeah, so this is like barely over a minute of real time left. Yep. That's because the moon Better. is so close to Earth and it bends time and space. Yep, that's the you know. canonical reason. Okay, so we gotta we gotta actually like finish this quest and then catch the postman. The postman actually runs away at 5 a.m. Um, if he finishes delivering and then stands, like, by the gate, at 5 a.m. he flees. Um, and as you can see, it's past 5 a.m. Well, it's about to be. Oh, no. Runs over? Desync? Question mark? Yeah, we're in the we're in the final hour. Getting three masks in the last hour. Barely any time to spare. Oh, I actually forgot to mention, but um, the reason I have uh, the special delivery still equipped is because I did an equip swap before handing it, and then when I re-pause, it remembers the delivery. It's like a quirk of a quick swap. So I can use that to get Chateau Romani. For no reason. Just as a flex. You have to clip into the milk bar because, uh... You don't have Romani Mask. But yeah, the reason that we want to be in here is because uh, the postman spends about 30 minutes talking to Madame Aroma. However, if you talk to the postman during this, 
um, he'll start moving again. So it's actually key that we enter here, like, right before he talks to her. Um, otherwise, we would not be able to get the mask in time. Like, he would literally not be close enough for us to get the postman hat. Uh, and yeah, we have no time left. Still need couples, still need postman. For those saying 20 seconds left, you're wrong. It's less than that because it's 45 seconds per hour instead of 60. So yeah, we'll have 18 out of 24 masks total. The ones that we didn't get, we couldn't get. And the Romani I chose not to get because that would be really boring to watch. Gotta ring the bell for good fortune. Nice. Wasting even more time when you have basically none to spare. Okay, and this is not well documented, but you can actually talk to the postman uh, within one frame before he runs away, if he gets there after five. There are also some weird circumstances when he just disappears into nothing. Was that Japanese? I am unfamiliar with that. Anyway, I warped here because this is faster than going the other way. Huh, made it, with one frame left. Did you intentionally slow down a little bit there to make sure it was one frame left? Yes. Thank you for being honest. For the content. I'm not ashamed to admit it. But yeah, now we do our victory lap. But yes, it was it was good for the viewer experience. Wait, so uh, what were the masks that you couldn't get? It was, what, All Night, Blast Mask? Yeah. Uh, uh, Great Fairy Mask, which I think I read in chat was actually possible if I tried to get it after I got Dooku Mask. But obviously, since this is live, I have no way of verifying that. But even if I could get it, artistically, I would have decided to not get it because it's cooler to not get it. So I still would have ended up with 18 last time you played. Fair enough. Yeah, apparently it, it does work. So for viewers of this, it is possible to get the Great Fairy Mask. Wow, we lied. Sorry. But for content reasons, we didn't. Obviously, it's more entertaining. I mean, as a viewer, you agree that you're glad that I didn't do that. So you're welcome. It was, it was pretty cool to get the fairies without fairy mess. Yeah, so next year the challenge will be finding something more arbitrary than this. Well, for next year, hopefully it's Ocarina of Time, because for the last two years we had something planned um, that is extremely hard to plan, that is possible. So eventually, one day you will see it. Hopefully next year. Hopefully. You will see you Ocarina just said that Time. last year. I did say that last year. <laughs> rando Lotad. No, it's not but a Rando it'll Lotad. Worth, it'll be worth it. I think most people know what it's supposed to be. 
They actually don't. I see a lot of people thinking they know what it is, but they're wrong. In the best possible way that they're wrong. Hundo one pause? I can't say. Uh, but yeah, this was... This was the most ambitious Lotad that I've done, specifically because of the game time making it so hard to root. It was very challenging to make this. And I was thinking if this even is RGA viable without getting all the stuff that you got. Originally, I didn't even think it was possible to get, like, just to do any percent because time moves so fast before you get out yeah. of I thought you would need to day reset, maybe even for RTA. Yeah, I see in chat Garo being possible. I don't think so, because that needs uh, Epona. And you wouldn't be able to get Epona under these circumstances. Um, I do want to give some shout outs because this cutscene is long. Um, main shout out to Imbued. He's the only person that. This is my MM dealer. Anytime I talk to anyone about anything MM related, it's Imbued. So, there you go. But also, thank you to Sample Name, Turkenheimer, Ben Stevens, 56, Adrian, Orchid, that's my cat, and ZFG for hosting this. That's ZFG me. didn't actually help in any way, he just hosted this, but thank I, you for that. I'm happy to just show this to the people. And special shoutouts to Enop, specifically during the cutscene, the Zora cutscene. Okay, let's see how I did the Majora fight. Notice that the game time, they just like set it to weird things during these last parts of the game. Interesting. Like, during that Giants cutscene, they set it to like 5.28 a.m. And the moon, they set it to 7.45 a.m. So you'll see that, you'll see it jumping around during the credits even. I'm surprised that you didn't just randomly get the Art pieces in the trials. Nah, gotta know when to wrap them up. <laughs> yeah, time of day uh, has a lot to do with the sky. So, like, you'll notice, like, if you ever enter the moon when it's fourth day, the sky is like pink. So, that's why they set the game time for the cutscenes and stuff. Um, for those that aren't aware, normally you can't hit the mask with a uh, light arrow in the front. But there's a weird hitbox thing that lets you, if you shoot in a specific spot. <laughs> and Great Fairy Sword is, uh, I think, four times stronger than Kokiri Sword, so it makes the fights pretty fast. Yeah, and then plus Great Spin also. Um, I actually do a new strat for Wrath. I don't know if it's faster, I don't care if it's faster, but 
but it's new. I'm at four out of ten. That's cool. And there you go. Time. There you go. That is the run. Nice. GG. Yeah, that was a very cool run. So that's all all dungeons, all fair rewards, and most masks. 18 of 24 masks. 18 masks. All in first cycle without Song of Time. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, so uh, do you have any any last words to say about this? <laughs> any last words? <laughs> any last words? Before um, I kick you out? Well, I do want the credits to be in the video. Okay, yeah, yeah, we can play for the credits. Day 9? I think you saw that. Hey, wait, it went back to day one. Yeah, it'll it'll jump around during the credits, you'll see. Also... It's actually... Yeah, you talk. <laughs> I was gonna call you out. Your timer oh. is inaccurate. Because the run should actually be... Two hours thirty-five oh two. Uh, I didn't count uh, before file select. I did RTA no. timing. From yeah, RTA timing. That's what it should be. TAS really? timing is two thirty-nine twenty-one. Uh, maybe it's the difference between like the video encode and the test timing or something. I, uh, I stopped the timer like a second late too. Or maybe my timer has been running slow all this time, and that's how I do my speedruns, and I just use a slower timer to fake yeah. good times. I'm actually just starting controversy. Oh no. I got caught. You'll see me in a clickbait YouTube video in a few days, guys. So what would you do if it turned out that your timer was fast, and people retimed your runs and they were still... I mean I I retime all my videos manually <laughs> anyway so so I am quite confident that my timers are accurate at least so, unless somehow my timer is accurate and my video recording is also inaccurate but if the video recording is inaccurate then what even is accuracy This reminds me of the SRM explanation Dude yeah Also, I'm, I was about to say, there's a credits warp where you turn it day 10 or 5, I don't remember. And then just go from West Clocktown to uh, Termina Field. Yep. Yeah, if it's... Well, I don't think it's day, unless we're thinking of two different things. But no, I if don't you, remember. Them. Yeah, if you enter um, Termina Field with... Um, a different scene setup. The scene setup that you get when you play Song of Time, um, you actually start the credits. But that doesn't have anything to do with the day switching in the credits? No, it's the scene setup. Okay. Also, there's no more inputs in the run or anything. So, oh. TA timing ended as well. Oh yeah, also, just uh, back to the timer thing, just a uh, funny <laughs> little story. Um, there was actually a GDQ, I forgot what year, but there actually was a GDQ where like the first day their timer was slow. And so like there were multiple runs that people thought were world record because the timer was slow, but they weren't actually. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that was funny. And now, Oops. now I can finally explain. The frog, that boy, it represents a low ted on a unicycle, and the unicycle represents how there's only one cycle. Whoa, that's deep. Ooh. But yeah, that's anyway. why that guy was just hanging out there the whole run. Um, yeah, this will be on my YouTube channel today because it's February 21st, so that is non-negotiable. And after this, uh, Ben Stevens is going to do something super yep. important. Yeah, there's going to be one more run after this. Uh, ben Stevens is going to hop in and we'll watch some other new Mysterious run. No, no relation to Clint. Potty break. Uh, use the credits as your potty break. Go, go, uh, if you need to get a snack. Or use the potty. Now's your break. You need to pay your taxes. You need to call your mom. If you need to hydrate. Everyone remember to hydrate. I'm gonna hydrate right now. Same. Sponsored by water. Uh, the, en the encore is going to be a secret until it starts. Yep, I will not spoil. Yeah, no spoilers. <clears throat> Shout out to all these masks that we couldn't get. Hey there. Oh, hello. Is that Welcome. our special guest? Welcome to my stream, Ben. This is my stream. Hello. That freaks me out because I'm, you know, watching your no. stream and I oh. hear my audio twice. Well, I hear your audio twice. Whoa. Yeah. What's going on? But yeah, we're just waiting for the credits and then we will start the encore. Yeah, I'm gonna say goodbye here. Goodbye. Gonna watch the secret run um, on my own already. Alright, see ya. See ya. Yeah, I am also not going to be here during the secret run. But I okay. do wanna see I do wanna see the end screen. Just in case. Yeah, yeah, we'll go to the end screen. Just just in case you desync before the end. Oh yeah, that that'd be terrible. I'm very particular about February twenty first. I do not blame you. It is a a blessed sacred really. holiday. Exactly. Well, that was a cool run. That was a cool run. Uh, I like that challenge you did at the end there in the uh, in the swamp spider house. How'd you come up with that? The fake challenge. Um, yeah. I, already, I already shouted you out, but you want a second <laughs> Wait, shout out, so, so here you go. <laughs> I, oh. I didn't hear that, actually. Yeah, Ben Ben came up with that idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm sad uh, you didn't have enough time to, 
to do the whole thing. Well, the thing was is that you can't do bean anyway. You can't plant the yeah. bean, which I didn't realize. You should have planted the bean, sorted it out, and then did the whole thing. That would have been awful. I'm glad you okay. didn't do that. Well, we have the run. There's no modifications happening to this. I think you should George Lucas this and uh, just, you know. Make prequels? Yeah, do that. Lotad prequels now? Okay. It's the end. Now, now it's over. It's okay. And thank right. everyone for watching my run. Uh, I put a lot of effort into it. I'm happy that um, people watched and enjoyed. Thank you. Uh, goodbye. Enjoy Ben Stevens' thing that I'm going right. to say. See you later. Thanks for doing this. This was really cool to watch. All right. Bye. See ya.